All right, so I'll back up here for a second and just show you my kegerator or keyser that I have here. This is a seven cubic foot insignia, which is Best Buy's house brand. And uh, I think I picked it up for right at $175. So this is what I ended up with. Um, now this is the finished product. I do have making of videos of this um, that I'll try and throw in here with some like specs on how I made it and stuff like that. So basically just everything to get a kegerator up and going and I'll show some footage of my old kegerator which was just a mini fridge with one keg and one faucet and my co2 bottle all shoved in there and it worked great like that was a great starting point but um, I wanted to have more than one beer on tap at a time um, I like to have friends over to try all this so um, three kegs should be enough for now this one will fit a fourth um, you just have to move the CO2 bottle out of the uh, keyser, and I have since done that because it actually wasn't that big a deal. The best part about these wood collars is if you need to access it, you just drill through and uh, that's how you do it. I just fill it with liquid nails when I'm done and it's sealed back up. So I'm um, going to open this up, just kind of give you some close-ups of everything before I do. Um, I'm going to take this off the tripod and uh, just show you what we got going on here. So this is the ink bird. Uh, this will control both heat and f like the freezer itself. So if you wanted to get some sort of heating element that went down in there in case it's like winter and it gets too cold in there, like if you were lagering or something like that. Um, these are just uh, basic beer faucets that I got on Amazon for about $24 each. Um, my lo lovely wife stained the wood. These are just standard Home Depot 2x6s. Um, they go down both sides. If you notice, I have them uh, screwed to this piece so that this was an uninterrupted board all the way across, both the front and back. So <clears throat> that's kind of how I did that. When you open it up, I have these computer fans just to circulate air down in here to keep the temperature consistent. And then I have three kegs in here. And uh, this is my Belgian white beer that I have going. This is the Galaxy IPA and the Galaxy Belgian that I've been talking about. And this is uh, the pumpkin pie beer that I've been doing some drinking on uh, since it's fall. And a nice fall uh, spiced seasonal beer is a great thing to have on tap. So um, feeding all of those kegs, I have this manifold that I made at work. Um, bent them to tip it away from here so that everything cleared and I have my single hose feeding it and as I said you just drill a hole through the back and you go down to your bottle outside the outside the keyser so um, another keg would fit right here um, no problem I've done it but uh, I'd have to get rid of all these beers including the limited edition St. Arnold's Pumpkinator which would be a tragedy. But uh, yeah, that's how it works. Basically everything is routed. So uh, keg one is over here. So keg one just, the hose loops down and goes to here. Keg two, obviously this one, these are ball lock. These are pin lock, pin lock. Eventually I'll move all of them over to one or the other. But for now I'm just kinda, whatever I have at the time, I'll switch out all the fittings and make it work kind of annoying not that big a deal um, and then obviously the beer lines I need longer ones because my carbonation is an issue uh, I'm supposed to have 10 feet of beer line I only have like a foot and a half so I will be coiling up some beer line to go down in there uh, in some of this dead space soon but um, these are one inch shank faucets uh, they're four inches long don't really need that I was envisioning putting some insulation right here but this thing holds temperature great. It barely uses any electricity, so um, yeah, couldn't be happier with it. This is the inside of my keyser. I'm gonna try to show you how I made it, and hopefully you can make one too. They are awesome. But the main reason I really enjoy kegging beer versus bottling, not only for convenience, is the lack of sediment. And if you don't know what I mean by sediment, um, this is a homebrew bottle that I did. It's all grain. Um, 
bottle condition. So I put uh, the dextrose in there and that's what carbonated this bottle. Um, so it's a 12 ounce bottle. That is extremely satisfying to crack a homebrew and pour it. But I'm gonna pour it here and you'll see as I pour right towards the end, I have to stop because some of those sediments will start going into the beer. And so that's a good home brew pour, you know, not a problem, but then you're left in the bottom of the bottle with all this yeast sediment, which I don't know if you can see the difference between that and that, but uh, night and day. I mean, it's, this is like the stuff, I mean, on certain styles of beers, that's supposed to be in there, you're supposed to drink it, whatever, but for a lot of them, that's not what you want. And if you smell this, it's it's very like yeast, it's punchy, like it's, it's in your face stuff. So you always discard that and then you drink your beer, which I fully plan to. This one doesn't look overly carbonated, but it might just be really cold. This is that yellow rose that I made a video about not too long ago. Really, really good beer. Didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to, but I also didn't dry hop it um, like I was supposed to. So I'm gonna set this off to the side for a minute. I will finish it. Wasting this is not so cool. I just wanted to show you kind of like why you might wanna get into kegging um, just from a, the end product standpoint. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this uh, pumpkin beer I've been working on. Um, or drinking on recently. It's fall here, so it's lovely. And uh, this has like pumpkin pie spice in it, nutmeg, cinnamon, all that. I put two cans of pumpkin pie that I baked down, or pumpkin pie filling that I baked down in the oven for two hours. Really, really, really good beer. But uh, here's how it pours. couple drips there but that's the kind of color head all that that you're getting out of this I mean that's a good 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 beer and uh, just comes out of this this keezer and I love it so much so if you want to figure out how to make this keezer uh, stick around I will show you and I will put in exact measurements for this keezer itself um, since it's a pretty common one, you can get it at any Best Buy. Um, I'll, send, I'll put links for all those faucets, that Inkbird temperature controller. Um, fantastic beers, no sediment, clean pours every time. Um, I could not recommend kegging more. You'll save time, you'll save, I, well you're not going to save money because that's ridiculous. Um, all this costs quite a bit. Just the keg itself is about 50 bucks. I got a four pack of pin locks for a hundred, but I don't think that's a pretty standard deal. So, no sediment, kegged beer, forced carbonated beer, I would say tastes better. So that's that's all I'll say about that. But uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put the video about how I made this here in just a minute and uh, show you all the tools you need and stuff like that. Okay, so as previously stated, all you need to build this kegerator is a power drill, some uh, liquid nails, a power grab. This one you don't even need the attachment thing. It has, it's pressurized, so it just shoots it out. Super awesome. An extension cord capable of two amps, which I think all of them are 10 to 15, so the cheap ones are good to go, no big deal. You need a one inch spade bit, not quite sure. Um, it drills the holes for the shanks for the faucets. You're going to need a Phillips bit because you're going to need to screw the boards together um, with these wood screws. Um, as you can see here, it goes from here all the way back into here. I believe these are two inch, two and a half inch wood screws uh, coarse. Um, I drilled pilot holes because I didn't want anything splitting uh, for the Temperature controller down here, I used this uh, bit. Maybe I used a three quarter inch bit, not quite sure. 
drilled circles and literally used a wood chisel to chisel out the area until that fit in there. I'm sure there's a better way. Like I didn't have that saw that loops up and around. I don't, I don't really know what it's called, but um, I didn't have that. So I just literally used a chisel, made it work. Um, for the wiring, you literally cut the stock wire, you cut the end off of this wire, and you make it work. I will show you how to do that here in just a minute. Wire strippers, obviously, you're gonna need a wire nut to tie three of the wires together. Um, and some electrical tape just to make sure everything's protected. And uh, as for the wood, two by sixes. You're gonna need two of them that are cut to 37 inches. That's for this specific freezer, the Insignia seven cubic foot deep freeze. And you need two uh, two by sixes that are cut to 16 and 3 eighths inches. That's for the two side pieces. Um, other than that, it's easy. It's super, super easy. Especially if I give you the wiring diagram for this, which I will open it up here in a second and show you. It'll be cake for you to do this, like no problem at all. So I'll be right back with you, hopefully with that wiring, and uh, we can get looking at that. Set my lid off to the side. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna be securing these uh, MPT, these are quarter inch MPT fittings, quarter by quarter, and then the valve itself is female quarter MPT by female quarter MPT. This is quarter inch, and then this is 5 16 I believe, or maybe it's a quarter, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna seal them up with some silicone tape or some uh, Teflon tape, I mean. I'm gonna seal it up with some Teflon tape and uh, get it all bolted together. All of these are in. Um, everything should be nice and tight. Um, I guess I'm going to go through and leak test it later and hopefully when I install this I still need to drill a hole for the uh, screws to go in so let me get this going here. So that is my completed manifold. Um, it's, yet again, nothing fancy. Eventually I might have to add like a, a relief valve over here because if I don't equalize the keg pressures and all of them, it won't, well, it could get a little messy, but hopefully this will work for now and uh, at least as a temporary fix, this will be what I roll with. All right, inside, you're gonna wanna drill a hole for your two power cords. The black one is the original for the freezer. And this one is the new one that you're gonna use. It's just a cheapo extension cord. So basically, see if I can get in close here and still have it focus. The directions they have are a little weird, but you can see you jumper certain ones. I'll, I'll put a drawn diagram on there here in just a second. But you plug everything into the back of this, it gets power, and it literally cuts on and off the freezer um, to keep it at the right temperature. And then the temperature sensor, I just kind of throw it around in here just to get the right temperature for my beer. So I'll set it like, if you set it on the floor, obviously it'll be too cold, but like set it on top of one of your kegs. If you notice that it's getting hot, it'll keep that temperature perfectly. Um, as for this manifold and stuff, you can buy these. They're just like $50 or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find these fittings cheaper elsewhere. Feel free. Computer fans. I got a two pack of these fans. They're Corsair, so they're pretty good. For eight, I think it was $8, maybe $12, something like that. And then I bought a 12 volt power supply 
for $3 on eBay. Um, and I can put the part number to that um, in the video. But you want fans to circulate everything. Computer fans are the best option because they're supposed to run all day, every day, and that's what you need in here. Um, but that's pretty much it, man. It's easy. Like everything in here is not difficult. You just got to get sit down and do it and uh, have the freezer or buy the freezer. So yeah, that's, that's my keyser. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, the best part about it is you can use dry erase markers here and uh, kind of customize what you got going on. So happy brewing out there. And uh, I'm going to try to make a separate YouTube channel called YouTube Beers because I think it's clever. And uh, with that, happy brewing. Please subscribe. And uh, yeah, have a great day.